So um, it is important to have a place in your classroom dedicated to math learning and math skills. Whether you call it a math center or not doesn't really matter. It's more about how it functions for you and your children. So it's a dedicated space in your classroom, whether that's just a file crate or whether it's a shelf or something like that where the kids can go to practice what they have learned, independently practice what they have learned during your math lessons in the classroom. And sometimes free exploration in the math center is fine too, just so they can kind of get used to all the materials and how to handle them and so forth. Um, so one thing you wanna have is a lot of small objects for counting and not so small that they are a hazard of course right you have to take the ages of the children in your classroom into consideration so everything that i'm going to show you tonight is uh, these are things i've used in my four-year-old classroom uh, my four-year-old pre-k classroom um, so if you have younger children take that into consideration when you're selecting materials for your kiddos um, but these are the ones that i use and have worked for me for many years in my four-year-old classroom and certainly these can be used with five-year-olds as well all right hi to Leah and Judith and Mandy welcome everybody come on in and I'm gonna start sharing some of my favorite math things with you so these are my farm animals and you might notice that all the tubs that I have that I use are clear and that's because I feel like when children can see what's inside the bins, they're more likely to interact and choose the materials. So for many years, I, like most of you out there watching, had the primary colored bins because they came with the cubby storage and all that that my school ordered for us. And so I had the primary colored bins, but they drove me nuts. Um, because they were always, you know, it just looked like a big patchwork quilt of, of bright colors all around my room. And so then gradually over the years, I traded other teachers until I only had two colors, which was much better for me. But then eventually I saved up and I bought these clear storage tubs. These particular tubs, I believe are from Discount School Supply. And the reason I like them is because they're, um, they're not 14 inches, they're um, shorter than that. And they fit the depth of my shelves better. And I just think little kids can handle these easier. So on the end of each clear tub, I have one of these little pockets. And so for those of you who are dedicated Target shoppers like I am, um, you may recognize these little pockets. These are clear adhesive label pockets. You can get them several times during the year. Target Dollar Spot will carry them. You can also find them in other places in online as well. Um, but they're a good deal. And inside I have placed a label. So do you see how that pulls back and then you can easily switch out your labels. So um, this label or these labels, I should say, I have them for all the centers in the classroom. And if you would like labels um, that are editable and free, <laughs> right? If, free, if it's free, it's for me, right? If you would like some labels like that, we have those available to members of our free Facebook group, which Tom will post a link to in the comments below. So if you're not already a member, you're gonna wanna join so you can get your free labels. And they're located in the units section of that Facebook group. It's called Preschool Teachers Are Superheroes because we are, right? And you can download the whole set it's a whole bundle of labels that I'm actually in the process of updating. I just posted them um, earlier this summer, but as I go through and make changes to my centers, I am updating them with more images as I go through and get the centers ready and all that. I'm like, oh, I didn't take a picture of this one or that one, so I'm adding to them. So if you don't see this exact label, it will be coming in, a, in an update into the group very soon. So anyway, it has the word typed in it, but these are editable. So if you teach in another language or you use different terminology or if you have to use all caps or whatever it is, you can go ahead and do that. So these are free printable labels. So I have each tub in my math center has a label um, on each end of the tub. And that way when the children put it on the shelf, they have a 100% chance of getting it put away the right way. And then there's a matching label on the shelf. So um, it's very easy for cleanup because they look at the picture, they know what goes inside the tub, right? These farm animals, so they can put them back and then they look for that same label on the shelf and they match it. Now, 
it's not like they come to your classroom magically knowing how to do that. You'll have to teach it. It's one of those uh, procedures that you teach your kids during those first few weeks that you're back at school. And once you do it, your teaching life will be so much easier and your day will go so much more smoothly. Um, no, Leah, the Facebook group is totally free. So yeah, we have more than 30,000 members in our Facebook group, um, which they're just passionate about preschool like you are. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so here's the little farm animals. And I love this new updated set. Um, I think they're from Learning Resources. They just have smoother lines and they're a little bit softer material. And I like them because there's the softer material isn't as loud as the plastic ones I used to have. So they're more like a rubbery material. And before you ask me if they have latex, I threw away the packaging. I don't know, but if you go to the Learning Resources website and type in farm animals, it will tell you if they, I'm, I'm sure that they wouldn't put out a product that had latex in it with all the allergies that are out there these days, but you can't be too sure. So go and do that if that's a concern for you, but they're much quieter. So somebody at Learning Resources has been listening to the teachers out there that have been telling them what we want. And that's a good thing. Now, if we could just get politicians to do the same, right? Okay, so each tub has a label on each end of the tub and then the children put the tubs on the shelf where there is also a matching label. And I think I got this one from way over here. So I'm gonna put it over there behind me. This time I got smart and I put all my bins in front of me rather than behind me like last time. So there's a lot of different small manipulatives. So you choose the ones that work best for you and your kids like all the little animals i kind of change them out with our themes so there's um, pets and there's dinosaurs there's transportation there's bugs so i kind of change out what kind of little manipulatives that we put out um, so you decide which ones you want to put out when but one one that's pretty much standard in every preschool classroom here this is a better angle um, are the little counting bears and I love the kids love the little counting bears too they come in the primary colors and they they are made of harder plastic I, I haven't seen if they've made an updated version of these that are more of the rubbery material but these are great counters because Little kids love bears, right? And they are perfect for practicing one-to-one -one correspondence, simple counting, patterning, um, sets, all kinds of different things you can do with your counters. So this is one of the labels that's in the free packet as well that's also editable. And it has the pictures that you can print out. I print mine on cardstock using my instant ink, of course, so I don't have to worry about ink. I actually printed three sets of labels this week because I'm relabeling my things in my classroom and some of the labels were either had been ruined or outdated or whatever, for whatever reason, I've been re um, redoing them. And um, yeah, and so they're editable, so you can put in your own words. Um, but the teddy bears are a staple. So my, my hint for you is to not, um, if you've already started, of course, you can't go backwards, but to not put them all out. Like I don't put a whole tub of teddy bears out because it's a lot of teddy bears <laughs> and um, they'll make a giant mess so I only put just a few out on the first day but yeah these are great for sorting patterning counting making sets any kind of a math activity that you want to do you can use the teddy bears with it doesn't have to be for a teddy bear theme or a winter theme or anything like that no children will be harmed if you use the teddy bears at any time during the year um, they're fun and they're engaging Okay, and then another thing that we have, dominoes. Now, one of our main goals in um, any early childhood classroom, right, is to teach subitizing, right, and one-to-one -one correspondence skills. And one thing that's great for that are dominoes. And I found these dominoes that are foam. Yes, they're foam, so they don't make a lot of noise. And I think these are also from learning resources. Don't quote me on that. Um, so yeah, so there's dominoes here. They're in the primary, well, most mostly primary colors. And once you teach your kids how to do this, now you might wanna start with some very simple dominoes. Maybe you wanna make your own, and I would just do up to the, up to the three dots. 
um, on paper, make your own set because um, up to six is a little much at the beginning of the year in pre-K. So I would just make my own sets of one, two, and three and let the kids have at that. And then when it's time, when you when you see that they're ready to move on, you can pull out these that have all the way up to six. Um, but these are great for those kiddos who are learning how to subitize, right? And that's quickly, quickly recognizing the quantity without counting. So if we were to flash this, it's too small really, but if we were to flash this at our kiddos, um, we would hope after we've taught them that they would instantly say two without having to count uh, with one touch, one, two. Um, but if they do, if they're at the stage where they count by touching, that's one-to-one -one correspondence, one, two, that's okay too. Um, it's a progression. <laughs> All right, thank you for helping everybody, Jen. I appreciate that. Yeah, the comments are going by really fast, but we have a lot of really established members over in the Facebook group, Preschool Teachers Are Superheroes, that can help you out and show you where the labels are when you get there. So if you get there um, to the group and you don't see where to get the labels, um, post in the group and one of our super fans, superhero, super fans will um, let you know where they are. So yeah, <laughs> there you go. And I'm getting a lot of messages, y'all, and um, I'm live right now, so I'll do my best to answer them when I'm done, but I can't read them right now. Um, but yeah, so dominoes are another great one. And um, this will be in the updated version of the labels that I'll be putting out, um, hopefully by Friday. Um, but I love these phone labels. Uh, foam dominoes, sorry, foam labels, foam dominoes, uh, because they're quiet and they don't make a lot of noise. So these are great for your little ones. I do suggest for the beginning of the year in pre-K to make your own just up to the number, just up to the number three, um, so they can practice with that smaller quantity before they get bombarded with the larger numbers. So I just make a, make, make a paper set or use your own foam or something and then work your way up to these. These are nice. Um, another great thing that um, is great for non-standard units of measurement are cubes. Now they, there's a lot of different cubes out there. Any kind of cubes that attach, these are Unifix cubes. Unifix is a brand name um, but they, there's lots of different ones. There's some that are called snap cubes. I have some of those too around here. Um, <laughs> But these are Unifix cubes. They're great for fine motor too, um, but they are a math manipulative because you can use them for non-standard units of measurement. And so for example, you could put out some, I don't know what, anything really. You could have them measure their shoe. How many cubes long is your shoe? How many cubes high is the chair? How many cubes wide is the door? Um, you can have them measure anything. Measure your friend with cubes. Have them lay on the floor, measure your friend. Whatever it is that you wanna have them measure. But these little cubes are great non-standard units of measurement because they can easily see the color and realize, okay, one color is one touch. So one, two, three, four, five, this is five cubes long. So it's kind of a precursor to rulers, right? That the kids will get exposed to later. If you're having any connectivity issues, refresh your browser. Um, our connection here looks strong. Um, and these are, yeah, you can use these for anything. The minute you give these to little kids, here's exactly what they do. I'm sure this will not be a surprise to any of you. And I say, hey, go for it. That's that's fine motor skills. I say, sing five little pumpkins, five little ducks. Um, but we also use these a lot in our tray games right? You can use them for anything, you guys. Sorting, patterning, counting, measuring, um, but we even use these in our tray games. And I'll, I'll just segue right into the tray games then, I guess. Um, so these are ice cube trays. You can find, and I don't have those out right now, I should get them out, but you can find silicone ice cube trays occasionally that only have 10 spaces because if they only have 10 spaces that would be a 10 frame uh, which helps kids develop fluency within 10. Um, I have bought a set of silicone um, ice cube trays at Walmart for 
a dollar, a dollar ninety nine at the most, and I cut them in half because they were ten. They were well, it was really twenty, but I cut them in half, and I got a nice ten frame. It was really cool. I have a broadcast about it somewhere, but anyway, we play the tray games. Um, the children roll. Where's the cube here? The dice, right? I love foam. Foam is great because foam is quiet. You can see this one's been well loved. Some of the dots are starting to rub off, and that's because my four-year-olds quite often in the beginning of the year especially they have to touch in order to be able to quantify so um yeah that that's totally normal um these are very cheap so they come in giant packs of like 12 so i'm not worried about them rubbing off this one's rubbing off because i used it with a duck pond activity with water and the water <laughs> washed it off um but anyway the kids roll the cube, each child in your small group, this is a small group game, each child in your small group gets a tray, an ice cube tray, preferably with 10 slots. But really for this activity, we're not wor worrying about quantities of 10, we're just worrying about one-to-one -one correspondence. So if our goal is one-to-one -one correspondence, then the tray doesn't really matter. But eventually we wanna transition them to a 10 frame. But they roll the cube, whatever number they get, they they put the, they roll the dice, they put the cubes in there. So if I rolled a three, I would do one, two, three, and then I would have three in my tray. And then we would take turns rolling the cube or the dice. I got a one this time, so I add one more. And the game just goes on until my tray is full. Kids love this game. We just change up the manipulatives we use throughout the year, right? And this is a, this is a game I like my mini erasers for because then I can change them out seasonally but I can totally use this game. Can you hear that? Do you know what that is? Those are my teddy bears. <laughs> I can totally use this game with my teddy bears because the teddy bears fit in there nicely. Whatever manipulatives you have that are small that will fit in the trays is a great game to play. Everyone I know that I've told about this game um, that has tried it out in their classroom says their kiddos absolutely love it. So I know Jen is here and Jen uses the tray games. So if you use tray games, ice cube tray games in your classroom and your kids love them, let us know in the comments below so others can benefit from this super awesome cheap activity because you can get um, several ice cube trays for a dollar at the Dollar Tree or just about anywhere. So I actually have a bin um, with my trays in it. And once I teach this game to my kids, oh, and let me back up a little bit and say that at the beginning of the year, I don't use a dice that has up to six on it. I use one of these foam cubes, right? And I'm sorry, my camera is making everything really washed out tonight and I really don't know why. I think it's the yellow behind me, the yellow, do you see the yellow? Anytime there's yellow in the frame, I we totally get these crazy um, color problems, but I'm not a photographer, so I'm not really sure. But I know that yellow causes us problems, so. Um, but this cube is a, it's a soft, squishy, it's my, one of my favorite things, it's missing a side here. Um, it's one of my favorite things for sure, especially for math. I use it for a lot of other things, but these are just index cards I cut and I put stickers on. So I just have this cube, each side is stuffed with a, a different um, index card. I actually would use only up to three uh, for the beginning of the year. So I would each side would have the choice of one, two, or three. And so that's the only options the kids would get when they roll the cube would be one, two, or three. And that helps them in the beginning when they're just starting out with this whole idea of counting and one-to-one -one correspondence and subitizing. It just helps them solidify the concept so that they can continue forward. Um, yeah, Shannon, the Dollar Tree right now has the pumpkins. They, they have them every Halloween. They have the the ice cube trays that are silicone and they only have 10 spots and they have pumpkins and then I have several others that are like stars and I collect them whenever I see them but yeah they have those out right now those are awesome but Walmart has just square ice cube trays but they're made of silicone and they have 20 slots and you can cut them in half and get two and they work really well hey Jen the other Jen is here um, the other gen, <laughs> the first gen, uh, says, my kids love the tray games. They think it's a new game every time. See, I tell people that and they're like, really? Yes, every time you switch out the manipulative that you use in your tray games, the kids are like, it's a new activity. And I'm like, yay. Um, and then when, it's, when they're done, when their whole tray is full, I just say, 
let's see if you can do it again. I dump it all out. So it's kind of like the game that never ends, like the song that never ends. So yeah, I can't live without my ice cube trays and my pocket cube so I can quickly and easily make dice um, up to the quantities that my kids are comfortable with. And then when I see them doing well with the pips on the die up to three, then I'll increase it to four. Um, yes, and then Elaine is reading my mind. Elaine, how did you know? Ta-da! <laughs> she said, use pom-poms if you want a quiet game. Yes, here they are. So I love pom-poms. Um, and I like them because this size fits perfectly in my tray and it's just another way to get another really inexpensive manipulative uh, for counting, patterning, sorting, anything you want. Um, and they're very inexpensive and you can get them in many different colors. So if you wanted to do a holiday theme, you do orange and black, red and green, um, whatever, you know, whatever colors that work for you but they love these things and so these are my favorite this size here for the tray games now I have tons of other sizes for other things so you could be sorting sizes even if you wanted to do that um, because another thing we want to do is expose our kiddos to shapes and sizes in the math center right okay now I have a lot of I'm gonna put just a few of these back because I'm I'm swamped in tubs right now Another thing um, is pattern blocks. I don't have the, sometimes the foam stuff is great, but one problem about working with little children is they like to put things in their mouth. So sometimes the foam stuff gets teeth marks in it. I know, shocking, isn't it? Um, <laughs> oh, Kelly says they used red, green, and yellow pom-poms in their trays for her apple unit. Perfect. Um, Yes. So any, um, let me see who asked that. Veronica said storage for this. So anything that's on the shelf in my classroom, anything that's on the shelves, I should say, is for the kids to touch. Um, so anything you put out is for the children to touch. And then I have storage for everything that we're not using right now. And I have two video, or three videos on that. Um, you can go back and watch. We have, I don't two or 300. I want to say 250 videos that I've done over the last two and a half years or so here on Facebook Live. And I've given you two tours of my closet and one tour of my garage so you can see how I store things when they're not in use. Um, but anyway, pattern blocks are amazing um, because they really get the kids to think critically. And um, if you want pattern block mats, I've got I've got them from a bunch of different sources over the years, but my favorite one is free. Would you like to hear it? <laughs> so Karen at Prekinders, um, my friend Karen, if you go to prekinders.com, she has all of these pattern block mats for pretty much your whole year for every theme um, for free. All you need is the ink to print them. And so if you have instant ink, then it should be a no-brainer. So go to Karen and grab those. She's done all the hard work for you and they're free. And if it's free, it's for me, right? So pattern blocks are fabulous. And this is also a label over in the label bundle in the Facebook group. Yeah, in these little pockets, like I said, Target dollar spot, a couple times a year they have them. And then if they don't have them out right now, I think they kind of took them out for Halloween and stuff because, you know, Halloween's right around the corner, right? <laughs> Thanks, Target. Um, <laughs> but um, you can get them at other places as well. Yeah. <laughs> teeth marks, says Janice. Yep. So foam is great, but then you end up seeing teeth marks. So yeah, that's, a, that's one of the downsides to foam. It is quiet, but it always ends up with teeth marks. And, and one of the things I added to my math center recently were these little people. They're actually families. And I love them. You can't see this one. Let me hold them like this. I love these. So they have males and females. They have babies and cats. Uh, here's the baby. Here, there's a bunch of them. And they're all these different. Um, oh, that's a cat too. I was looking for a dog, but um, but yeah, they have these families. They come in different sizes. Um, kids can use them for sorting, patterning, and sizes. 
I really like that option. Um, they also make the teddy bears like that with different sizes so that you can have kids practice sorting by size as well because we do want to um, introduce them to materials for counting with by shapes and sizes so yeah but I love these I love 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 these little counters the only thing is that the kids expect them to stand up and they don't necessarily always stand up it's very tricky to get them all to stand up at the same time the big guys here these guys stand up easily but the little guys they tend to fall over. So that can lead to some frustration. So I tell them to lay them down flat. Um, but yeah, I, I, they always want them all to stand up in a nice line and they order them by size or they order them from tallest to shortest or whatever, which is great, but they don't always stand up and that, that causes a little bit of frustration for some kiddos. Just, just be aware of that. So let them know when you introduce the material to them. That I know that some of you want these to stand up, but they're going to be a little hard to do that. And so some smart kiddos, you can give them some, some they'll, they'll line them up against the tub so that they stand up. And I'm like, ah, you're a problem solver, right? Okay, got to put that one away. All right. Oh, I know. Um, so one of the things you can do is add a balance scale. I don't put this one out um, at the very beginning of the year because they tend to these tend to break easily. They really I feel like they really have to be introduced to the children very carefully and specifically um, to let them know how it works so that they don't. I've had many of them break over the years. They're just not super sturdy, um, so they can put things in there and, and see if they can get them to balance which one's heavier and lighter so once you've introduced it i kind of wait until october to really get this out but i brought it out for you guys tonight um, because they have to learn how to care for all the materials first before they can start because um, they'll just fill these up with eight million things on each side <laughs> you know unless they understand what this is and how it works it's not really very helpful until then. So I kind of hold off until I have all of the manipulatives, the basic manipulatives out, um, and they know how to use those manipulatives, and then I introduce them to the um, balance scale here. Um, so there's that. And I left this label out for y'all, so there's a label for that, okay? And then, <laughs> This, this can be a little annoying, <laughs> just FYI. It makes noise. Generally, I don't like things that make any extra noise in my classroom, but this is a tape measure. They do love it. It's pretty intuitive. They understand right away, or a lot of them will say, um, my dad has one of those, and you know, or they've seen it at work before in action, so yeah. Anyway. It's great to introduce the concept of standard measurement, right? And um, even just basic num numeral recognition as well. You can ask them questions, you know, how long is the chair, the table, your friend, whatever. Um, but we put this out and let them measure things and they just think it's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Terry says, can we order these learning tools? Um, Tom has a link to uh, my favorite things for you in the comments below. Um, and if you go there, most of these things are linked to there. Yes. Um, where did you get the families? Uh, I got them from Learning Resources, Shannon. So there, I did a whole Learning Resources buy recently just because they, um, the little people were again that soft material and they weren't um, the loud plastic. So yeah. I'll add them, I'll update that post with these newer materials. So that's a good idea. Uh, let's see. The labels, Judy, Jennifer got you on that one. Good. Instant ink. Oh, instant ink. Oh, girl, you're missing out if you don't have instant ink. Tom will um, drop a link uh, to my instant ink post for you below. Tom, just put best printer into the search box at Pre-K Pages and it will come right up. Excuse my reach. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, magnetic um, numbers. Numeral recognition is not the be-all end-all of your math center. We need to build the foundational skills for math first. Um, learning numerals, to identify numerals, actually comes much later in the sequence and we want to really focus on that one-to-one -one correspondence, that subitizing, those really basic foundational skills. Um, and number, numeral recognition uh, or identification is just the icing on the cake if it comes 
it comes, it's not going to help them understand quantity anymore um, at this age. There we can see the five. Um, but I ha I like these numbers. I think it's really important to have numerals. It really drives me crazy when they don't have the open four. Do you see the four with the open top there? When they have the closed top, because nobody, well, some people do, but most of us don't write the closed four at the top and it's confusing to little children. So I like the open four at the top. I, I don't recall where I got these particular numeral magnets, but I'm gonna guess they came from Lakeshore because Lakeshore usually is extremely intentional and careful about the products they put out. And I know that they wouldn't put a closed four. Um, and I like that the number one is different than the letter L because if you accidentally mix your letters and numbers, don't ask me how I know this, <laughs> it's hard to sort them out again. So I like that. Um, and a lot of times the zeros do get mixed in with my alphabet letters on accident. And then we have to sort them out and talk about, talk about that. But anyway, so this picture here, this label isn't going to be in the updated version of the center labels that will come out later this week but all the text is editable so you can do that in any language and <laughs> sorry <laughs> um tom did this for me tonight yay um my other one got destroyed but every center has a sign in it and now how you display the sign is completely up to you whether you uh, laminate it and attach it to the wall, whether you, I have them in these little um, protectors, just because I tr when I travel and present to teachers, it's easy for me to pop this in my suitcase. Um, I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that they're most the most durable thing in the world. So for the classroom, you might be better off just attaching the poster to the wall. But then again, I know so many of you work in cinder block um, buildings where you. you don't have any way of attaching things to the wall. So in that case, these might come in handy. But these are my editable center signs. So in the box, you put a picture of your center. I need to update my picture. And then below are the words that um, explain to the adults in the room, whether that's an administrator, a parent, um, a volunteer, a specialist, whatever that is. Um, it explains what we're learning and so this one says we're counting to tell the number of objects we're learning the count sequence we're recognizing creating and extending patterns we're classifying objects by attribute we're naming and describing shapes and so um, you can just take your standards whatever those are whatever state or country you're in and you can pop those basic math standards in here because it's editable so i have these in several colors if you have a theme in your room a color scheme or anything i just go with black because uh, my bulletin board backgrounds are black and it's just you know it goes with everything so <laughs> kind of like Mark Zuckerberg's dressing uh, theory where he just wears a gray t-shirt and uh, jeans every day so he doesn't have to expend any brain power on deciding what to wear. It's the same thing with, <laughs> with the classroom. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. She's working overtime tonight sharing links for us in the comments. That's sweet. So we have one of these in the center as well. Display it however you like. And then um, my math books. And again, I'm going to reach. <laughs> <laughs> so every center, of course, you want to have um, literature in every center. You want to have books, high quality books, um, books about counting, numbers, shapes, patterns, you name it. Um, so I just have a tub of books in every center and I just collect them. Um, you know, whatever sources that you have available to you, whatever inexpensive sources, whether that's Scholastic or it's discount, um, not discount school supply, half price books, books a million, any of those discount stores um, where you can get good books at a good price. So I have a box of my most favorite math books here and I'll just share a few of them with you. I'm not gonna read any to you, you can. <laughs> um, but I do have, um, and I forgot to give these links to Tom, uh, but I do have a math picture book post over at Pre-K Pages. So it's like one giant book list of all the math books you could ever need. Now, I'm sure it's not exhaustive, but it's a pretty big list. So um, 
you can look up math books, Tom, if you want, or I can go back and drop the link later. Um, so I have a lot of these books on that list as well. And I found this really awesome set on Scholastic not long ago. Um, yeah, the National Geographic kind of a math set and I bought the whole set. Yeah, these are from Scholastic and they are amazing. I have all kinds. There's opposites. Oh, I guess I have a double set because now I'm seeing duplicates. I buy double sets a lot because um, especially if I need to stock a center um, with books and I know that the National Geographic books are going to have those bold bright pictures that um, really capture kids attention um, so I probably bought a double set just to stock my math center I do that a lot and that way I always have a backup right yes yes books at every center is a must um, another thing you can have I don't have out right now uh, puzzles right Puzzles are for critical thinking. They're shapes, they're geometry. Um, what else? Things for shapes and sizes. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. It's really an endless list because anything that kids can count, um, you could use natural objects, you can use shells, rocks. I have corks. I bought them in bulk at the craft supply store. Kids love them and they're super quiet. Um, but yeah, anything that kids can touch and count. Gems, if you're allowed to use gems, if they're if they're not too small for your kiddos, um, you can use those. So um, I'm going to assume, do you have a list of books that go in each center? So yes, Roberta, uh, we have a dramatic play center book list. We have a block center book list. We have the math picture book list. Um, we have an alphabet book list. Yeah, so the answer is yes. Oh, we have an art center book list. So yeah, um, it pre-K pages, um, if you search book lists, they will come up. Ooh, mix it up, says Jen. She read that book today. Yes, to go with a color mixing activity. Absolutely. Um, yes, Jen is like an expert at these Facebook Lives. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just gonna go through the comments real quick. Uh, okay, all right. So some of you may be asking or thinking or wondering, so how do you introduce these materials? Like how do you start the year off? Because I don't have all of these out on the first day of school. That would be asking for it, right? That's like a surefire way to ruin your first day of school. Um, so anytime I put out anything in the math center, so I. I try to introduce it to the kids. So on the first day, I'll probably have the pom-poms, the books for sure. Books are pretty a much a go-to. And maybe the tub of teddy bears. I mean, I can't have it completely empty, but I also don't want to overwhelm them with choices and make clean up. I'm teaching them how to use the materials and how to clean up um, those first few weeks of school. So I try to make it easy for them and for myself, not easy, but make it successful, set us up for success, set everyone up for success. So I will show them the materials. I'll sit them in a group and show them the materials. I'll name the material for them in case they don't know it or that they don't, we all, we want to share a common language on the name of all the materials in the classroom. So whatever you want to call these, um, pom-poms or whatever, whatever you're going to call them, um, share that with them so that you have a common language. And then you might give a few examples. You might ask them what they might be able to do with them. And some people, some kids might say, we can glue them. Maybe they've had experiences with these before. And you say, oh yes, I bet you've glued these before in a craft or an art project. But in this case, we're going to use them for and give some examples because that is true. Pom-poms could be used in uh, art projects and they probably have been. Um, so yeah, you want to introduce the material to the children, ask them what they think they might do with them. And then you're going to clarify for understanding because you want to make sure that not only that you have a common language for all the kids in your classroom when it comes to the materials that are out on the shelf, but you also want to make sure that they know exactly what to do with them. Um, so that when they are not using them the way they are intended, you can remind them and say, you know, remember we talked about how we use the pom-poms in the math center and was one of those ways sticking them up our nose? 
I don't remember that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Claudia, the, um, the labels are in our Facebook group. So yeah, we'll drop a link for you. Number bots are really great. That's a Lakeshore material and they are super popular. I have the alpha bots. I don't have the number bots, but you want kids to be engaged. You want those for sure. I'm sitting here playing with these pom-poms in the tub. So it's like a sensory bin for me. <laughs> so very fun. So any material I put out, I do that. And then I will say to them in this label here, this tells us what goes in this tub. Should I put put the dominoes in here I shouldn't why not oh because it's not the same thing that's on the tub ah okay I gotcha oh and now I'm gonna put this tub on the shelf and I put it in the wrong place on purpose and they go no you have to put it where the label is I'm like oh can you help me and they show me where it goes very effective um, and a great way to show kids how to care for the materials how to clean up the materials, how to use the materials. Yeah. So you want to set everyone up for success, yourself and your kids at the beginning of the year and introduce those materials. And then as we add things and change things out, people always ask me, do you change things out in there? Yeah, I do. As I see the kids growing and maturing and learning, I change the materials out. That doesn't mean every single one. If they're the tray games pretty much stay out there all year, my ice cube trays, because we're going to use them in multiple ways throughout the year. Um, but if I see that a material is not not being used or not interesting to the children anymore, the first thing I'll do is I'll interact with them with that material just to make sure that they either didn't forget about how to use it or just to reintroduce it to them. And then if I still see that they're not using it, I'll, I'll go ahead and put something else there. So, so yeah, so that's how I will introduce the, the math center to the children. We also have, um, during our day, dedicated math center time where I will work with a small group, um, working on uh, focused math activities um, based on the assessment data that we collect on students. And so we will have small, um, small groups that I work with and we'll work on very specific targeted skills with those small groups. Usually I use ESGI to do that to figure out which kids go into which group. It's a fabulous one-on-one um, -on -one assessment tool that creates charts and graphs for me that I can use to create my small groups. And then, um, and then the other children are working independently on different things from the math center. And that's why I have to make sure that I set everyone up for success in the beginning of the year because the math center plays a big role in my daily schedule the rest of the year and so I have to make sure that those routines and procedures are well established in order for things to run smoothly. Oh thank you Jen. <laughs> There's the book lists. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I think that does it for the math center. Yeah and the um the center signs are awesome for cleaning up and to help the adults, whether that's your assistant teacher, your principal, your director, your speech therapist, occupational therapist, parent volunteers, parent open house, whatever it is, they're very helpful for that, as are the labels. So yeah, that's the math center. I did the block center a couple of weeks ago and um, over on my Facebook page, where you are right now actually, so you're not over anywhere, but here on the Facebook page I should say, we have more than 200. I should probably count them, but I'm probably, I'm gonna say about 250 videos that I've done over the last two and a half years. Um, and I will, I will update those as we go. So there will be new one, there's gonna be new ones added. But if you have missed any of those and you wanna see the garage tour, or you want to see the closet tour or the classroom tours from uh, a few years ago, you can go ahead and watch those at your convenience. I'm working on right now, I'm work I'll tell you a secret, I'm working on creating a vertical writing center because I didn't like the way that my writing center was before conflicting with, it conflicted with a space in my classroom. So I wanna create a vertical one because I've seen some people do that um, over in our Facebook group and it was really cool. So I'm working on that. When I get that ready, then we'll do another classroom tour for this school year, so hopefully soon. So yeah, go and grab your free labels and let me know what questions you have in the comments below or any suggestions for future broadcasts. I'm Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages and until next time, have a great night. Bye.